All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Deborah Vales, and it's an honor to be able to be here this afternoon. I'm very, very excited as we're doing a very special right. interview. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am. Okay, just a little feedback there, guys. <laughs> Okay, I want to welcome you all on this afternoon. This is a special interview that I'm doing. I am very honored to be here today uh, with my brother, Mr. Jerry Steiner. Uh, he is my oldest brother, and I'm telling you, I'm just very honored to have him on today. And Jerry Steiner is running for mayor of Battle Creek, Michigan. Mr. Steiner is a longtime resident, born and raised right there in Battle Creek, Michigan, and he is very, very well aware of the events and things going on there. He's a lover of our hometown and uh, very well versed in the community. And uh, Mr. Steiner, I believe, will bring much to the table as a um, one of the things, as I, I have already talked to Mr. Steiner briefly on some of the things that is on his heart, and we're going to hear from him today. And uh, one of the things that I am so impressed with is the fact that change has already begun to take been taking place. And not only that, history has already been made. It's been about 60 years since uh, the city of Battle Creek elected a mayor. And Mr. Steiner is one of the um, candidates running. As a matter of fact, he's on his, on his own platform. He's really running for the people, his desires for that. We're going to hear from him uh, in this and his heart and so I'm, I'm honored again to be able to share this today. And Mr. Steiner, it's an honor that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And we just want to hear from you. Just give us a little bit of briefing about your heart and where you are right now. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, it's an honor to be here. And I'm humbled with my little sister to uh, interview me like this. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really beautiful when you think about it because uh, it's all about God and family, you know, and without either one of those, we're lost. But yes, I am a candidate for mayor in Dallas Creek. And the last time the mayor was elected in Dallas Creek was 1961. That means my grandparents, my parents, and uh, myself up until this point never elected a mayor in Dallas Creek. But what does that tell us? Well, the political framework. The Voters' Rights Act, all of this was probably promulgated at the very beginning. Now, anyone who pay attention in school, and I know y'all pay attention, you heard about a guy named Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was a successor to John Kennedy, who was assassinated in 1963. Two years before this, the Battle Creek City Commission was formed, and it was formed by nine people. And I guess they erected a city charter. And they said, when they erected the city charter, that the mayor was demoted to a ceremonial position. So they chose to pick the mayor and the vice mayor among themselves. Now, we only have nine people. Nine people are picking the mayor and the vice mayor. So the whole city commission's uh, objective was to remove the citizens of Battle Creek from the voting process. I don't have to really go over to you step by step because 60 years tells you that uh, they didn't have the citizens of Battle Creek voters' rights at heart. Now, a lot of people will argue with you about this system that they set up. It's a ward system. They got nine people in five wards. And I guess they got a bunch of jurisdictions and how we lay that out. But my point is this. When you remove the people from the voting process, and then when they come down to the city commission meeting and ask for help, you know, I know that this nine-member city commission here in Battle Creek has been really reluctant 
to really get off into the community and try to solve problems. My whole thing is, is that if you can't put somebody else's concern before your own, then we're gonna have problems. It's always someone in a worse situation than you are. And it doesn't take anything to reach out and tell somebody that you care about. Don't cost nothing for somebody to tell somebody you love. Them. Don't cost you a dime. And really, when it comes down to it, with everything we're going through now, not just as a nation, but as a community, a worldwide community, the only way we get through the serious problems we're doing now is to rely on God and to come together. Yes. I believe that if I take a breath of fresh air, and believe me, y'all, I take a bunch of it. But what I want the citizens of Battle Creek to know and anyone else around the country who has this nine-member city commission, the nine-member city commission works for itself. And for the, in, 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 well, I'm not going to say it. They work for themselves and, and they spread the money around to the people with <laughs> So if, if you've got a nine-member city commission, if you've got a nine-member city commission that is not responsible or accountable to anyone but themselves, you, you get into a, you enter into an area where you're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, for so long, they get together and they decide, well. Uh, are we going to uh, try to uh, reach out to the people and get uh, the mayor on the ballot? Mm -hmm. They vote five to four, no mayor, no election. Right. And they come back and they tell you, well, the only reason we didn't include you is because uh, we feel that a lot of people don't understand the vote. A lot of people are not going to be able to uh get in the flow of voting. Well, I, my argument there is, well, you've been kept by the voting booth for 60 years, so yeah. you've got to work with them, you know? I tell everybody, I say, listen, if I have your concerns at heart, and your ancestors and my ancestors marched so we would have equal voting rights, did they miss Battle Creek 60 years ago? Right. Did they miss them? Because Johnson signed the Civil Rights Bill in 1964, and he signed the Voters' Rights Act in 1965. Right. But the Battle Creek Commission put this, we all vote for the mayor in 61, 1961, four years before the Voters' Rights Act was signed. So they weren't paying no attention to the pickets, President Johnson, or none of that. And it languished for 60 years. So during the civil rights movement for the 60s, when uh, everybody was marching and everybody was picking them, I call it the assassination uh, decade. Mm -hmm. for Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Kennedy's brother. That's why I say, everybody say, well, look, Jay, uh, politics is politics. They are not gonna do nothing for us. They gonna call on the shot. Your best bet is to exercise your vote and raise your hand and speak when you see something is wrong, even if you're not sure. A lot of times, people wait and say, well, I'm going to let uh, somebody else do it. And imagine how many people have said that here in Battle Creek in the last 60 years. So now, Jerry, um, we, we are come to here, we're 2020. And it in 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 and it's been decided that the people will choose the mayor. Right. So as you are running for mayor, can you tell us what is the biggest thing or the most pressing issue on your heart that you will change or put in place when you are elected mayor? The homeless. You got to do something for the homeless people. Everybody, I, I, hey, believe me, we have an administration in Washington that says push the push the people to the side right now, and let's go ahead and take care of this politics. You cannot govern if you don't have somebody to govern. And if you got a people who are dissatisfied with the way the government is handling things, 
you're going to have problems. There's no question about that, you know. And when you deal with people who are whose who views don't necessarily agree with yours, you've got to find a way to bridge the gap. I'm telling everybody, it ain't about Democrats. It ain't about Republicans. It ain't about independent. It ain't about the Tea Party. It's about right and wrong. You got to decide which side you own. Now, a lot of people will say, uh, you wrong, Gary. And you know what I tell them? That's your opinion. But what I'm speaking on, I'm speaking on what's good for everybody. See, some people want to leave some people behind. But as human beings, if we survive and we thrive and we move on through time, that means we have to rely on each other. There's not been a time in back in read and recorded history where when you ran into some real serious problems, we all joined together. We all joined together and we and we came through it. And what I'm telling everybody, we're gonna have differences. Yes. We're human beings. Very we, true. We Very take true. On, yeah, we take on the associations and assimilations of people that we like and love and respect. But in so doing, you must also take into effect how it's going to affect someone else. I mean, think about it. The person that don't have to worry about their gas bill or their light bill or how much gasoline costs to put in their car, these issues may not be germane to them. But people who work and help other people, pass out food and pass out clothes and try to make sure the elderly are taken care of. See, the whole thing is, it's all about polarization, trying to get us separated. Mm -hmm. Get them separated. You control this group and they control that group. Everybody talking about Donald Trump. Don't get me wrong. There have been bad presidents in history. We just have to get one at a bad time. That's all we need. And so hey. with that, with with that, and with what is taking place right where you are right now, the change and even just just this history history making event right here with this race. And it is a history making event, and we want to let the people know that and those that may not have really been paying attention to what is going on. Um, and I believe that, uh, Jerry, you are a catalyst in this and it's very commendable how you have stood up and you've taken a stand for the people, for change. And even though you've come through your own uh, difficulties in life and different things that you've gone through, challenges and things of this nature. Uh, tell us how what you've experienced and the, the some decisions you made were wrong. How has that helped you to become a better person so you can help now, now the generation that's coming now? I personally believe that everyone is taught right and wrong when they're young. Some of us latch on to it, some of us don't. You know? I can tell you that my own experience has been one, and I and I say it very, very humbly, of being hard-headed, not listening to my, my parents, not listening to my grandma, not listening to my mama, the people that cared about me. You know, so I strayed. I sat at the devil's table. And for some reason, the spirit of the Lord snatched me up out of there. Hey, all I asked him was, please don't let me die in sin. Don't let me die in sin. I'm trying to tell you when I think about, I don't, I don't sleep on the church steps. I don't. And I can't tell you the last time I've been to church. But I know I'm here at this moment in time because God will. Everybody said, why you run for mayor? I said, <laughs> I said, I'm motivated by the spirit. I said, I can't do nothing else. I said, they said, well, you started your campaign last year. I, I said, yeah. They said, well, oh, when did you pick up your nominations? I said, well, you can't pick up your nomination uh, form until June the 1st. But the spirit touched me last November. Now I know people I say, oh, yeah, that's what? Go on Facebook. 
Look at my campaign signs, the one I made myself, and look at the date. All I say is, hold my feet to the fire. If I tell you something, the first thing I'm going to tell you after I tell you, don't believe nothing I say, look it up. Because you got to have your own frame of reference on anything, especially in this day and age. Don't take nothing for granted. Don't think COVID-19 is some kind of myth. It will kill you. And those people that you love, everybody don't come out of it in good shape. They have some residue, some side effects you know, that they contracted from the disease. I'm getting a lot of ding ding on my phone. So I guess people like, well, listen, y'all, y'all you, you know I love you. You know there's <laughs> something about Jerry Stein. You know what I'm about. I'm going to raise my hand whenever I see something wrong. I ain't throwing bricks at nobody. Yes. But 60 years, they had to snow it. Yes. To get by that long. I mean, just think about it, y'all. Well, it's commendable. And I know that, and I'm hearing the dings too. I, I had a couple calls myself and I couldn't take them. But uh, what is so commendable again about this is uh, just the history making of it, but not only that, the tenacity that you have. And, you know, um, I, I, I really have been thinking about this interview and what I would say to the people of Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, I would say, get out and vote and support. I do support Mr. Jerry Steiner. I'm not able to vote, but this is my way of, of really uh, uh, saying, I validate you. And I have read up on all three candidates, all three are commendable, uh, but the two that are already on the commission and that's commendable as well. But Jerry, you are the only candidate uh, really that's running outside that, that, and that is commendable. That is very commendable. And so I think if the people would just take a look and yes, you vote your heart, vote your conscience. We're not trying to tell you how to vote, but we're telling you to get out and vote make a difference but i will say mr steiner brings a lot to the table and uh and we are thankful and i can speak on this front because i'm not in the community no but i do have a voice and uh, a platform and this is why we're here so i would speak to the community of battle creek to take a look at what's going on it's time for change it's time for someone to get in there and really make a difference and uh, speak for the people. And so uh, Mr. Steiner has made that platform very clear and I'm pretty sure there's other agendas. And I do have one other question for you, uh, Mr. Steiner, and that is when you're elected, how will you uh, make the transition to work with the commission as it will be after the election because there will be great change. So what will you do to uh, make that transition smooth? I gotta, be, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm anxious, I'm excited because there are a lot of African-Americans in the race for the other awards. So we know it's gonna be an exchange of at least five seats. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, some of, the, some of the races are a little problem, but this is the first time in 60 years that these many African-Americans have gotten on the back. So, uh, I mean, let me just think about it. You got some people that never thought about politics, but they knew something was wrong. They come up to me and Janice all the time, and they ask us. They say, well, why did they get away with it? Well, you got to understand, a lot of people don't understand the voting process per se, and it can be very intimidating. I'm going to give you an example, the absentee ballot. First, they sent out an application. But a lot of people don't understand that that's not the ballot. I have a lot of people think the application is the ballot. You send the application back in after you signed it and they'll send you a ballot. However, the voting system here in Michigan, they send everybody an application. They send everybody one, you know, because they understand COVID-19 has a lot of people a little leery. Did I answer your question? 
Because like I can talk all day, you know, we talk all time. <laughs> well, talk. the question, yes, sort of, but the question was just how will you, you know, yes, there'll probably be new faces there and all of you will have to gel together. And so the question basically is how will you make that transition as mayor of the city and taking on such a, a uh, heavy, heavy, heavy job and duties? Look here. Uh, the whole transition will come about mainly because young people will be on, on, on the commission. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm at least looking for three or four African men to make the transition. And I'm in touch with these young people. And these young people know what I'm about and uh, who is the, the, should I say, the job enough to make all this happen. I take credit because my woman, my campaign manager, and my family tells me that it's not wrong to take credit when you know you are responsible. So like I, I tell everybody, I said, look, I said, if it wouldn't have been me, it would have been somebody else. Okay, you know? very good. I said, it wouldn't have been me, it would have been somebody else. That's right, that's very true. That's, that's the other very two true. candidates that are running, like you say, they already there. Yes. They already there. But like you said, if they lose, they are there. That's correct. That's correct. If they lose, they're, they're out. That's, that's right. And so this is, again, why this is so important. Right. And so the light bulb went on, right? right. right. So there's a lot at stake. And this is a why lot. we just wanted to get this interview in so people could really take a look at what's going on. And so we're very, very pleased to see uh, what's happening. And, um, and, and so we wanted to just take an opportunity to have you on today to voice uh, your, um, your stand in this. And uh, I wanted to just ask you a few questions. Uh, and again, I'm very proud of you and all that you're doing and the tenacity. And I, I know personally where you come from, the many things that you've overcome and it is a blessing. And um, you know, if our, our, some of our family that's gone were here, I know they would be very proud of you. So on oh, behalf you. of the entire Steiner family, I will just be the matriarch right now and say, we're very proud of you, brother. We love you and we're in your corner. We're rooting for you and keep going no matter what. And I know sometimes people can say things probably that would try to pull you down, but you keep your head up, you keep running. You have a goal. When you first told me, you said, I'm running for mayor and I'm going to win. And I said, you will win. So we know you're a winner. And so um, any other final thoughts you'd like to leave with the community, with the people? Uh, at this time. Yeah. Now we iterate. Try putting somebody else's concern before your own. I mean, just do it once or twice, you know, just to see if you can pass it on, you know, because what we need, we need a whole bunch of brotherly and sisterly love. The family is in trouble. And if the family is in trouble, the nation is in trouble. And if the nation is in trouble, the world is in trouble. I say unity. I say togetherness. Let's get together, y'all. Put our differences on the shelf and try to make a positive change November the 3rd. I believe, if I believe anything, I believe I'm the guy to lead Battle Creek into the future. But I need your help. I'm not going to tell you I'm a superman. I can't do it without you. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm counting on you. And I want you to count on me. But you know, I'm a holler, but that's who I am. Yes. You know, I've been doing it all my life since I was a little fellow. Go back in the archives and you can get up in the inquiry news, and you might see a little, a little skinny guy with an afro holding up a sign talking about voters, right? That was me. Me and my grandma. So look here, y'all. All I can tell you is what I tell you all the time. I ain't got nothing but love for you. And I always leave you in peace. But because this is my sister's platform, I'm going to let her carry us home. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry, for being here today. It's been an honor. And uh, I will forever cherish this 
this time that you've allowed uh, and come on here. You've taken time out again of your busy schedule uh, to be with us and we thank you for that. And I also want to encourage all of you to vote to go out on November 3rd and cast your vote. It's important that we do that. So take a look, citizens of Battle Creek, uh, my hometown, <laughs> uh, take a look at what's going on and uh, get out there and vote. It's important and every vote really does count. So even though I cannot cast a vote, but I'm casting my vote <laughs> because I'm behind this candidate and I'm thankful. So thank you, Jerry, once again for taking time. Yes, yes. And I want everybody to please listen to this because it's vitally important. Yes. As a nation, as a country, as a population full of men and full of women, we are going anywhere and do anything good or bad without our female. So stop trying to sit the female to the side because it wasn't an African-American man or a Caucasian man that took people to freedom. It was a black woman, Harriet Tubman. It was a black woman that helped the white women get women suffered. Y'all know about it, Sojourner Truth, she's right downtown, you got a money for it. I'm telling you, it's imperative that we come together as one and remember, if you can't remember nothing else, God loves you and I do too. Amen. And having said that, thank you again, everyone. Um, Jerry, one other thing that came to me Will you be speaking? Are there any events that the people need to know about coming up? Or how can people reach you uh, for more information about your campaign? How can they reach you? Well, hey, I'm on Facebook. You know, uh, I'm a pretty accessible guy. You know, I'm not accessible if you're in Chicago, or Ohio, or Indiana, but I'm on Facebook and I'm, I'm not a hermit, you know. I'm on the World Wide Web with my sister and all of y'all that's listening, you know, so like, hey, hey, if you're here in Battle Creek, when you see me, pull me up, you recognize me, holler. But I got to include one more important thing. My woman, Janet, she with me. Throw your hand up, baby. That's right. <laughs> my baby. Throw your hand up, because I can't do nothing without God and the women in my life. Some of you guys may have a problem with it, but think about it. It wasn't a man that birthed you, it was a woman. And I ain't never met a man that can have a baby. And believe me, at this age, I don't want to. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but we thank you, Jerry, again, and Janice as well and um we are backing you and we just know that this is gonna you're gonna make it to the finish line and we are encouraging everyone to get out and vote and uh and and i'm telling you i know that 2021 is going to bring in some good things so thank you and i thank the audience for being with us as well hallelujah thank you very That's much good hallelujah all right appreciate you i appreciate y'all let me show you let me prove it to you Peace. Peace. We're out. Talk later. All right.